Mr. Park forgot to do the problem. Sit down, Lee. <laughs> okay, where are we? David. Where are we? <laughs> so tonight, y'all, we're already spending one night on implicit differentiation, so you guys need to get it. I need to watch it. Okay, so 4.2. <laughs> This is called implicit differentiation. You know, wait, you know what I'm thinking? Because normally during homecoming week, we go into what we call homecoming mode. So we have less work, but then it really doesn't feel like homecoming. Whoa. Why? So never mind it. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, what I could do is we could spend two nights on 4.2. But then the problem with that is, once I change it, I gotta change everything after it. And I did like the whole darn semester. It's just, you know, it's just making it's more work for me. Stuff. That's all it is. It's just making more work for me. So, yes, we could spend two nights on 4.2, but then you do have PSAT tomorrow, which you're not taking. We have one class. Yeah, but you only till like what? When do you guys finish school? Today. What does it say? Eleven forty-five. Yeah, that means they're gonna excuse you at ten fifteen. Shoot. That's what I think. No. They just put that on to appease the parents. No, no I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, four point. I'll make a decision before the period ends. Implicit differentiation. Because if that's the case. If that's the case, then I should just make the assignment sheet just week by week. Because yeah. if we go to plan B, then I just got to change everything then. Maybe I will. Lesson learned. Do the Michaela Maroney face. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, can we just do implicit differentiation? <laughs> I thought we were going to go, like, go to lunch early, but I don't know. Okay, now normally when we take derivatives, when we take derivatives, y is already solved for explicitly in terms of x, like this. y equals sine of 3x plus 4, right? Or y equals square root of x plus 1 over x minus 1. See, y is solved for explicitly in terms of x. But what happens if you come across something where it's either difficult or impossible to solve for y? Like something like this x squared plus xy plus y cubed is equal to, give me a number. 2. Wrong. Okay. Partial, 4 partial. plus 2 plus 1, 7. How would you solve for y? I'll give anybody all the money in my wallet right now if you can solve for y. Do you have your wallet? Yeah, right here. You use the implicit differentiation. Look right there, got $20. <laughs> Right now, solve implicit, for y. Okay, let's just save time. You cannot solve for y, okay? <laughs> why? Blakesley's trying to do it. I was trying so hard. Oh, you use the cubic formula? <laughs> you use the cubic <laughs> formula? I need the 20. Yeah, I was gonna you, you, you can't! You can't solve for y. Why? Because it's y cubed. Even, you get, even if I put a y squared there, some of you would have problems solving for y. Okay, you can't. Okay, so what do you do when it's impossible or difficult to solve for y? We do implicit differentiation. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to x. So, this is what we're actually doing. We're taking the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So, in other words, we're not going to solve for y. We're just going to take the derivative. We'll go term by term. Now, when you have terms like this, you just take the derivative one term at a time. Okay, I'll do the first one. 2x... That's why? easy enough, right? Why? We don't know the derivative no. of x plus y. <laughs> plus y. The next one. Sorry. No, plus. Now, I see a product here. Oh, God. You need oh. to use the product rule. See, again, you guys, why didn't we learn product rule, quotient rule, train rule? So we can just ignore it now. So, give us so here we go. I see a product. I must use the product rule. So derivative of the first, one. Leave the second one alone. Plus, leave the first one alone. X times y. the derivative of the second. X no, what's the derivative of y with respect to x? No, it's dy dx. The derivative of y with respect to x. That's what dy dx is. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'll boil it down and I'll dump it down after I finish it. Plus, now over here I see box cubed. That's okay. So the derivative of box cubed is 
three box three squared. box squared times, derivative times the derivative of box. Times the derivative of box. Oh, there you guys caught on. I did. What is the number? What does this mean? Equals zero. Equals, <laughs> and then of course the derivative of any constant is zero. All righty. Oh, you know what I thought? You know what I'm thinking? Maybe the video is up there already for implicit differentiation. I don't know. I gotta check. But anyway. Okay. Now, now some of you are going, Mr. Park, how come you didn't do the chain rule on this? I did. This is like box squared. The derivative is two box to the first times the derivative of box, which is one. Is it one. It's so nine. I did. Except, so, wait, Mr. Park, let me get this straight. Whenever you take the derivative of x, you get one. But when you take the derivative of y, you get dy dx. Yes. That's because we're taking the derivative with respect to x. Okay, so some of you go, what are you talking about here? I'm going to dumb it down for you because you're AB. When you take the derivative of x, you get 1. Here, I'll write it down for you. When you take the derivative of x, you get 1. But when you take the derivative with, uh, of y, you get dy dx. Would we ever take Just the derivative it. in regard to 1? Say that again. Would we ever take the derivative in regard to 1? No, not in AB. <laughs> so you get it? Okay, but... Our goal is to find dy dx, because dy dx is a formula that tells you the slope of the tangent line. So we need to solve for dy dx. So once you do this step, this is the hard part right here. The rest is just algebra 1, which might be difficult in itself. So how do I solve for dy dx? So I underline the two terms that have dy dx in it. You keep it on this side of the equation. Keep it on the left. And then what do you think I'm going to do with these two terms? Move them to the other side of the equation. So you get negative 2x minus y. Blakesley. Um, can we do u substitution? No, 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 Erase it from your mind. Oh. OK, factor out dy dx. What's going to be left? x, x plus 3y squared is equal to negative 2x minus y. And then what do you think? Last step. How do I get rid of this? Over. Yeah. Divide. Divide. This is algebra 1, people. All over x plus 3y squared. Boom. That's the derivative. Yo, yeah, Mr. Park, how come the derivative get x's and y's in it? That's because we couldn't solve for y from the beginning. See, if we could solve for y from the beginning, then you would have only x's over here. But since we couldn't solve for y, or it was difficult, we did implicit differentiation, and then that means your derivative is going to have x's and y's. So now, what if I told you, write the equation of the tangent line at the point 2, 1. Okay. Well, what do you need to write an equation of the tangent line? You need a point, slope. which I gave you, slope. and then you need the slope. Well, the derivative tells you the slope. Yes. But Mr. Park, got x's and y's in it. Well, just plug in 2 for x and 1 for y. That's all you got to yes. do. So if I plug in 2 for x, you're going to get negative 4 and then 1 for y, all over 2 plus 3, which comes out to negative 5 over 5. Ooh, so it came out nice. Oh, negative 1. So therefore, y minus 1 equals negative 1, x minus 2, and just leave it in point slope form. What's the equation of the normal line? Y minus 1. Y minus 1 equal? Negative Make a one. negative reciprocal of that. X minus 2. There you go. So this would be the normal line, right? So easy. So the, the step that you guys need to get down is this step right here. You've got to take the derivative correctly. OK, let's do another example with trig in it, because that's where it's. Park, what's going on today? I'm tired. Okay. Just start. <laughs> if you're tired, then just zone out and don't like rock the desk back and forth. What can I do? Both? <laughs> I have been. Okay. And I suppose you guys don't want homework when you guys have seen the cab. Okay, let's do another one now. Y cubed is equal to pick one of the six trig functions. Side. Side. Ah, you guys pick the easiest one. And then y over x or x over y. This is x over y. 
Okay, compute dy dx. Now, can you see that it is pretty much impossible to solve for y? Blake's looking for a way. You cannot solve for y. Or at the very least, it's going to be very difficult. So we're going to do implicit differentiation. So what we do is we take the derivative of both sides of the equation. Yes. On our quizzes and tests, are we going to have to figure out if it's too difficult to solve for y? Or you no, just I'll probably tell you. Use some use implicit differentiation. Anyway, you can kind of tell. You can kind of tell. OK, so the left side, look, I see box cube. What's the derivative of box cube? Three box, Three box squared Three. times, times, times the derivative of box, which is dy dx. Dy dx. But you know what? Since I'm just going to wipe out y prime now. Oh, because isn't y prime easier to write than dy dx? Yeah, I like y prime better. But don't call it y1. Somebody came in for help this morning and they're calling it y1. Don't ever. That's like you're going to get laughed out of the dormitory. Okay, now what do I see over here? I see such. I see sine box. How do I take the derivative of sine box? Cosine box. Cosine box times the derivative of the box. Now, what do I see in the box? I see a quotient. So you must use the quotient rule. So what would that be? Low d high. One. One. Low d high. Minus. Minus high d low. Y prime. All over the denominator squared we go. Now you have to solve for y prime. <laughs> well, can everybody do the first step? The first step is the key step. This one. If you get this wrong, it's like minus everything already. Okay, now how do you solve for y prime? Well, this is what I would do. I would multiply both sides by the least common denominator. So you're going to get 3 y to the 4 y prime is equal to, and then you got to take this and you got to distributize it over here. So you're going to get y cosine x over y minus xy prime cosine x over y. Can I cancel that y with that y? No. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. OK, now, how do I solve for y prime? You have to put all the y prime terms on one side. So I'm going to bring this term over on this side. So you get 3y to the 4y prime plus xy prime cosine box is equal to y cosine box. Now what? Factor. Factor out the y prime. See, after the first step, it's all algebra. Algebra. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, oh, I forgot the right side of the parentheses. How do I get rid of all this stuff? Divide. Divide. So y prime is equal to y cosine. So this is not difficult. It's a technique, people. You just practice it. There. That's why prime. And then in the book, they'll ask you, OK, find the slope of the tangent line, and they'll give you a point, and then you just plug it in, and you get trig functions, so some of them are going to have problems there. Why are you guys saying yes? By now, you guys should be good at trigonometry. It's like you guys don't want to even be here. Okay, I'm going to make an executive decision then. We will spend two nights on this assignment. Hey. Which is actually three nights because tomorrow they don't have anything. Hey. Wait a minute, you don't have anything tomorrow. What are you going to do tomorrow night? Homework? Common app. Yes. College, College stuff. That's what I'm playing. College stuff. <laughs> and you, I finished my part. It's pretty, it's pretty bad if the teacher finishes his or her part before you. I did the letter of recommendation. Okay, so what does that, so, I, so I'm telling you now, we're going to spend two nights on this homework. What are you thinking? All right, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> do it tonight and come in for extra help. No, you don't need it. If you just listen to what I just told you here, you don't need extra help. Is it on Friday then? What? Is it on Friday then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, you know why? You know why? Because we have a maxi quiz on Thursday, and with knowing you guys, who knows how long that might take, right? Do you want to be in my picture, Mr. Park? No. Oh, wait. What do I do? Okay, so I'm going to change the assignment sheet. So 4.2, all of it is due on Friday now. Yeah. Yeah.
So, on Thursday, we're going to take the Maxi Quiz. You have a few questions, a few questions you can ask, and then I'm going to let you, you got to finish that homework. Right? Because I'm telling you, if you just wait till Thursday night, is that what some of you are thinking? Yeah. No, You're going to forget how to do this. This is a technique. <laughs> All right, any questions? Shall we go to lunch early then? Yes. Okay, let's go to lunch. Let's take a picture of our towels. Wait, wait, I want to see. There's a lecture. There's a lecture. No. I think this is it. I hate you. Is that your laser differentiation? No, that's. <laughs> oh my god. You're a ballsy guy. You're a ballsy guy. This is logarithm. This is not even Park. Park. Oh, this is PCH. That's why you're stupid. <laughs> if I could excuse you early for lunch, go. Mr. Park, post that. I want to watch it. No, but you don't want to it's easier to use the box than the form. Because then that way you're, when you use the quotient rule for the derivative of box, it's, it's a lot easier without the powers, right? Yeah. I mean, you can, okay. no, you can do it, but you, did you get the same answer? Yeah. Point. Is this still a tomorrow night? Did you get the email? Maybe. Wait a minute, I did press this. This is AB. Why did the logarithm... It says AB. It's so easy. Oh. This is calculus. This is calculus. How do you like your sour concept? No. I guess we're going to have to use this video then. Darn it. Okay, bye.